Hello friends! If you're new here, welcome! I'm Anna and this channel is about everything related to art and crafting. And if you're back, I'm so glad to have your company again. Today we are having a crafting vlog and I will show you my new finished garment, which is a new reincarnation of my failed vest. We'll chat about letting go in crafting. I will introduce you to a very easy to follow tutorial for crochet fingerless mittens. It's very beginner friendly, so if you want to try, please don't be scared. Then I will talk about craft journaling and stickers in particular. There will be also some inspiration from wonderful subscribers. And if I manage to finish one thing today, I will show you my new hat. So get cozy and enjoy. But before I go to our usual format, I want to talk about an email that I received a couple of days ago before filming all this. And honestly, I was not going to make a vlog this week because I was not feeling quite well. I had another session of migraines and I felt really tired. But after I read and saw what you are going to read now, I felt an overwhelming intention, not overwhelming, it was a happy and grateful intention to make something, because that email gave me such a boost of meaningfulness in everything in life and what I do, what we all do together in humanity, I don't know. So. Melike is a subscriber to the channel, she lives in Turkey, and I won't read out loud what she wrote, I invite you to read it to yourself and imagine your voice talking to you. This left me speechless and with tears in my eyes, and when I wrote back to Melike to thank you for your email and ask for permission to share all this on the channel, this is what she wrote. And this is so true, and I know for sure that right now so many hearts are expanded with love and compassion. If you watched my previous crafting vlog, you probably remember uh, my crocheted vest project using African flower motifs. And I failed with it a lot. I, the sizing was not right. My tension, like crocheting tension was not right. And I tried to, to alter it, to change something about it, but it was all in vain. I cannot even unravel it because I weaved in the ends too thoroughly. <laughs> so, but <laughs> just some projects cannot be resurrected and are not meant to be resurrected. But the idea of that particular vest was haunting me. And guess what? I made a new one <laughs> and I will show it to you right now. This is it. As you might see, I I changed the pattern a bit, not entirely, but I adjusted the hook size and the, uh, the flower motif as well. And I made it like more adjusted to my figure and I think it turned out just amazing. Most of the yarn that is used here is leftover yarn. This one of 
the off-white kind of milk and honey one is the yarn that I used for the gigantic cardigan and there was a bit left but still I had to buy uh, one more ball just to crochet this but the yarn is very affordable and I'm still using even one what I have left and then another colors that are this beige green uh, this white are from that first vest the failed vest and this color is from the, the leftover yarn from the first vest that I uh, crocheted this year and look the color transformation is pretty amazing here so this is the vest that I crocheted and you see that it's more of a grayish beige color here it is you can see and here surrounded by all these colors it turned into purplish now you can see that it's the same color but the way like the the shade works I think it's pretty awesome. I like it so much and also honestly recently I'm more drawn to lighter colors. I can hardly wear any dark except for uh, my navy shirt like this and also my navy dress and the black pants that I have. Everything else I just want to be light and fluffy. So that's why this vest will be a great addition to my spring wardrobe. I couldn't take the crocheted vest idea out of my head uh, despite the disappointment that I felt after investing so much time and energy. I just wanted to make it work. I wanted to prove to myself that I can change something and have an item that I would really love. And I think it's an important mindset for crafting just to be able to let go of your disappointment of your discouragement of your failed projects and still not to be afraid to start anew also this week i attempted to knit my first socks ever and i failed <laughs> again and it's okay it's totally okay i just wanted to share this experience with you I found a very easy uh, tutorial for beginners to knit those socks but and after I finished the first one it just looked wrong. It was too big, the heel was constantly slipping and after I knitted the, started knitting the second sock they looked different. So I figured out I just need to find something else, some other pattern that will work or we'll try the same one but we'll be more diligent with it. So I couldn't unravel it the same day because it hurt too much <laughs> but unravel I unraveled everything on the next morning and felt great because I think I had that kind of expectation that my first sock knitting attempt will be a 100% success, but it wasn't. That's why it was hurtful. Nothing in this life, almost nothing in this life, is immediate success. Everything requires attempt and intention and commitment, especially it concerns crafts and art. If I'm bringing anything to this world, I want those items to be beautiful, useful, and meaningful. 
at least for me, I want myself to be happy, not everyone else, but just myself, if I'm using these items. Of course, if I'm um, making something for a gift, as a gift for someone, I'm thinking about their delight, <laughs> not mine. And I'm very interested to hear what you think. How do you overcome your disappointment and discouragement and failures when it concerns crafting? Let's share in the comments. We are in the midst of the last month of winter, but at least here in Belgrade it finally got colder and we are enjoying some winterish weather. And also in so many regions of our planet, spring doesn't come until the end of March. At least it's like this in my home Siberian city. And I thought, why not catching the last vibes of winter and making something that is cozy, fluffy and warm like fingerless mittens, crocheted fingerless mittens, that we are going to have a tutorial in a moment. Here, I crocheted the first mitten, just to show you, here. It's a very elementary pattern, very beginner-friendly. It's very easy and quick to make if you are a complete beginner or you just want something pretty that can be made super fast. Sorry for the sounds, there is a football um, playground, not playground, like small football field outside and all the kids from the surrounding buildings are playing there. So if you hear some screams, please don't be scared, it's just kids playing football. So for this very project, you will need yarn and you can use any type of yarn, but I recommend using chunkier type. For example, I have this. It's a leftover yarn from when I made my ear warmer. Yeah, so it's fluffy. I think it's a mixture of acrylic and wool, maybe like 50-50% ratio. Then you will also need a hook that is recommended for your yarn. Here I have this. It's a 8 millimeter sized hook and according to the US system it's the size is L11 if I'm not mistaken. Then you will need a tapestry needle and scissors and that's it. I honestly didn't expect that I would love this mitten. One mitten that is desperately waiting <laughs> for its companion. That I would love them so much. They don't, they don't restrict any movement. They are very warm, but not overly warm, you know. I think it will be just a perfect spring project to make. And I also like the yarn, as I, the, the yarn color, I mean, as I said before, I don't know, I'm a fan now of everything that is pinkish and light colored. Yeah. Okay, let's begin our tutorial. Here we have everything ready and I also got my very simple row counter, but you can just use your pen and paper. Take your hook, your yarn and make the initial loop. Just a simple sliding knot. And now chain the length that is enough for your hand. For example, I measured the length from here, just slightly above this bone, below this bone, and then to slightly above the knuckles. Do the chain stitches. Do not Crochet too tight, just make the loops loose enough. My chain is finished, it's here. Make sure to measure. I have 19 stitches here. And now chain one extra, like this. And then single crochet in the second loop from the hook. So this is the first, this is the second. 
and we single crochet here. And now single crochet in the next loop. And again. And repeat until the end of the row. The first row is ready. Make sure to count while you are crocheting to make sure that the number of stitches remains the same. I have 19. Now turn your project like this. Chain one. And now single crochet in the back loop in the first one. So this is our chain stitch. We are not touching it. We are working with this first loop. You see there are like two halves of one braid and we will single crochet only in the back. So this is the front, this is the back. And we single crochet in the back. Like this. And again. And again. And repeat until the end of the row when you have the last stitch left. Here I've crocheted, single crocheted 18 times and this is the last 19th left here, a little braid, you can see it. Yeah, and now at the end of each row we will single crochet not only in the back half but under both halves, like this. So both halves of this loop will be on our hook. Take a hook and insert it under both loops like this and single crochet. Now turn one chain and repeat in the back loop until the end of the row. We reached another end of the row. We have just one stitch left. And again, we double crochet under the both halves, in the both halves, like this. Now turn, chain one, and repeat everything until you reach the desired width. I also forgot to tell you, always count your stitches just in case not to miss anything and count your rows. I'm using my simple row counter. Although it's a very simple and easy project, it still requires your attention. Here you see, I have finished, so make sure you can wrap it around your wrist and it feels comfortable. Now let's bind off, but make sure to leave the sufficient length of your thread, at least two lengths, like this, or maybe even more, let's do three just in case. And cut. Yeah. So here. Now watch carefully because this is the most important part when we will stitch everything together. Take your thread, your tapestry needle, and now hold your mitten like this. So you have braids 
closer to your body. And here you have the initial row. First, run the thread where the back stitch is. The first, like the um, side kind of. Now you can see your first braid and you run so here first and the second and you go down the first and then up the second so that you have like a little tick mark on your needle like this and now find the first stitch here on the initial row. Run the needle through it, carefully tighten. Now you can see the second braid that you ran the stitch through. It will be the first one in our <laughs> second stitching. So here, look, we do the same. Down and up. And now find the second strip here, you know, it's kind of a vertical one. So we made two stitches. And repeat. Down, up. This is the third and make sure not to go all the way up because we need to leave some space to accommodate our thumb. For me it will be 10 stitches. So I already made three. Now I'm making the fourth one. Again. Down. The fourth, now I run the last tenth stitch and look, ah uh, yeah, so I will finish on the initial row and now I'm going to leave three stitches for the thumb. So I'm leaving this one, two, three. And here one, two, three. So I have to get here. For this, I will make like a small sliding knot just to keep it in place like this. to keep it neat. And now let's just walk our needle through those stitches just to make it invisible. Make sure everything is correct. Yeah. And we continue. And the last loop is here, it's kind of a side one. And now let's fix everything in place to make it look neat. Yeah, looks totally cool. Now we've in this end and also your initial end. And then you will have to crochet the second mid. And my 
second was already done, so that was my second. So I have my mitts ready. Let me know if you decide to make this project and feel free to send me your photos. In the previous crafting vlog, I already told you about my intention to keep a crafting journal this year, and I showed you this journal that Brian gave me for my birthday. And I already started writing down all the projects that I finished this year or I was planning to make. But at the beginning of this week, I had a feeling, a thought that I want to make my craft journaling practice a bit different from my usual journaling practice, which is just handwriting like very fast without any thought about how beautiful or not beautiful my handwriting is. But I want my craft journal to be prettier than usual <laughs> because it's it's a creative thing and I was thinking what I can add uh, apart from trying more to write in a beautiful way. <laughs> and of course, the first thing that occurred to me were stickers. I wanted some themed stickers, some pretty stickers, and I went around Belgrade searching for some variants, but I failed. And then I decided to make my own ones. I spent two hours on Tuesday morning trying to put two sticker packs together. I cannot draw watercolor illustrations myself. That's why I used some illustrations that I found in the service that I'm using. And it's a paid subscription and I get the license to use those images. So I was not stealing from artists and it's a, it's a huge no-no for me. I, I never... I never ask artists for something free or, and I always want to support them. And having a subscription to that service, this is how I support them. At least I, I hope so. <laughs> but anyway, to cut the long story short, I put together two sticker packs and then went to a good printing shop here in Belgrade and printed them on just simple A4 sticky paper. I didn't do any pre-cuts or anything. It was a super affordable project to make and I just used scissors to cut them out. I think I could make the elements a tad smaller, but after all, they look kind of cute in my journal. And I decided to share this little project with you. Uh, you can download it and print it out. You will find the link down below. Of course, it's for free because it wasn't me who created those images. I just used them and put them together under a license that I have. So please feel free to download and let me know in the comments whether you like it, <laughs> whether you enjoyed it. And I hope so. <laughs> I hope that you will enjoy it just as much as I do. It's a small thing, but it adds a bit of value and cuteness to everyday life of a crafter.
I've been dreaming of knitting a bonnet for quite a while. Yes, I've become a victim of the cute bonnet trend. I just love the retro and cozy designs that I saw online. And this is what I finished creating yesterday. I literally just weaved in the ends and attached my coconut shell button. Here it is. I didn't even wash it and uh, I kept wearing it inside all evening long yesterday and Brian was making soft jokes about me <laughs> for that and it was him who gave the bonnet its name. He said that the color reminded him of sunset and so sunset bonnet it is. I used the leftover yarn the white, the off whitish one from the gigantic cardigan and the floral vest, and then I also added a thin uh, mohair blend thread. That was my recent yarn purchase, and I just. It was very budget friendly, and I think I will need another bonnet using just that fluffy yarn. And maybe instead of uh, this closure, I will attach ties and make like a bow tie bonnet. I don't know, it's just mm, recently I'm not into wearing regular hats at all. I just want something more cocooning and protecting my head and the sides of my face. And before I finished this bonnet, I was wearing my alpaca hood and then my babushka scarf and sometimes them all together. But now I have this and I'm super happy and I'm even thinking of trying to knit like a summer bonnet. I don't know, maybe it's childish or silly, but I'm loving this trend and I want to try more bonnets to introduce them into my life. In every video, I encourage you to send me your creations, and this is what I received this week. Sarah, I love the calming natural tone so much, and the back is just stunning. I've been thinking of making something similar for summer, and Sarah's projects are an amazing inspiration. Claudia, oh gosh, this book that Claudia mentions sounds like the best crafting book in the world. And look at the cutest pillow. This brought such a huge smile on my face. Thank you so much for sharing your creativity and inspiring all of us. And this is it for today. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. I hope you enjoyed it. And I didn't have any new sewing projects to show you, but hopefully in the next vlog I will disclose some of the ideas that I have already and maybe I will have the finished things to show you. And for now, just be safe, please, and never stop creating because it's such a wonderful gift that we humans are given. And I'm sending you much love and peace. Пока-пока!